Yeah, we're good. Live? So I'll hand you these after. Just whatever right. so Chris already happens, happens. Mike Neighbors, who wants to go first? Mike? Absolutely. Uh, hey, everybody. How you doing? Yeah, hey, everyone. <laughs> good? It's Marley Scott. <laughs> Give it up for Marley Scott. Woo -hoo. Rowdy bunch in here. Uh, Marley, uh, tell us a little bit about um, performing and what you do to reach out to the audience. You're you're up there singing your songs. How do you? I mean, how do you want to put that out to your audience? Well, I mean, I think what's really important is to sing stuff that people want to hear and and can relate to. Um, I think that's number one because that's going to kind of bring people in and, and grab them, and uh, just keeping it really high energy. And, and uh, you know, if I'm having a good time on stage, I would hope that people in the audience are having a good time as well. So definitely, just the energy level and make sure that the band's having a good time as well. I think it's a really important important factor. Just a, just a follow up comment. I'm having a good time already. So yes. there you go. Excellent job, uh, Chris. Where's Chris? There. Chris Hardy. Chris Hardy, BX93, everybody. Woo! Chris. And now's a real good time to do a speech for the uh, CCMA uh, board uh, tomorrow. I'll, uh, tell me about the peanut butter addiction. Oh. I don't know where it started or anything like that, but I, I, I just obsessed with peanut butter. And I remember being a kid, and maybe this is where it came from, being a kid and my mom wouldn't let me eat it directly from the jar because she said it would get stuck in my throat and I would choke and die. And so maybe that's where it came from, but I just love it. I eat it like directly from the jar or, you know, I'll take like a spoon and dip it in, in honey and then dip it in peanut butter or... You know, anything. It goes. Peanut butter goes with anything. I mean, this morning at breakfast, they had those little mini craft uh, peanut butters, which is my favorite. You can't get in the USA. And um, uh, I was putting it on one of those little loaves they had there. So it, it, it's anything. It's a good thing. What other things have you found in Nashville that you can't get? Um, what do you crave in Nashville that, that you have to have as soon as you cross the border? Well, Tim Hortons, of course. Um, my manager get, laughs at me because I'm not a big coffee drinker, but when I'm back here, I like to do a, a small, half French vanilla, half regular coffee at Tim Hortons. Um, you know, and I love their sour cream glazed donuts. Those are a very good thing. So when I come up here, it's like I gain five pounds because I just want to eat all their baked goods. And, uh, you know, Hershey's, which is an American thing, makes a fondue chocolate that you cannot get in the USA. And it's very good. So I it's not FDA approved. Yeah, exactly. So I get my mom to send that down. It's, you know, I get these packages of like peanut butter and Tim Hortons and and uh, a whole bunch of Canadian goodies. The customs people are going what? It's true. They don't understand, but they're just jealous, I guess. <laughs> Pete, Pete, Peter, Peter Jaycock, everybody. Absolutely, uh, Peter. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, I guess well, we, we covered a lot the other day on the air, and uh, I, I guess one thing I neglected to ask you, uh, out in Edmonton, they're, they're very passionate about their country music, yes. down in Nashville they are. If you had to characterize, if you had to pick one thing that you've noticed uh, between the live audiences out west in Canada and south of the border, what would it be? You know, I mean, I've played a lot of shows, like industry shows in the USA. So, um, you know, when you play in Nashville, it's, it's, a, it's an industry crowd, and, and so it's, it's a kind of a different thing. Um, a lot of times they're not maybe as rowdy as if you're playing for, you know, if you're at Cook County Saloon in Edmonton and playing for a whole bunch of, you know, people drinking beer and having a good time. So that's probably a big difference there, but um, I don't know if there's a huge difference as far as, you know, if it's a regular show or not. I mean, I, I was playing in Dodge City, um, three or four weeks ago now, and, and uh, you know, pretty much the same crowd, they're having a good time. Country crowds are, you know, they're great fans, they, they love the music, and they want to dance and have a, have a great time and drink their beer, and, and so I wouldn't say there's too much of a difference. So you were one of those people who was uh, dying to get out of Dodge, eh? No, <laughs> that, was, trust me, that was the joke going the whole weekend we were there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Marley. Thank you. Does anyone, anyone else want to ask a question? Somebody got something they want to ask? Sure, I'll ask Excellent. You're the question guy. Get your way over yeah. there. <laughs> oh, no, Keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm good, okay. I'm good, I'm good. Sorry. Uh, yeah, your shoes today, what are they? Oh, yeah, yeah. We got these actually, I got these in Canada as well. Okay. It's, you know, not browns, no. These are Aldo. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's. Uh, we were joking when I was at your station the other day about shoes and shopping up here and how. It's funny because a lot of people think in the USA that 
that uh, it's better shopping, but you know that's not true. Mm. Sort of an opportunity to turn it back on us. You've done a lot of radio tours mm. and uh, things like this. Is there anything that really bothers you about some of the stuff that radio does? Mm -hmm. Ask, or is there something that you really would rather not us do, or, or something that we could do that's more effective? You know, I mean, everywhere's so different. Um, I guess I think that radio, radio, it, everywhere you go is different. Everywhere it's like some of them. Obviously, the setup's different. Some of them, like we've gone in and we played. Like when we were at JR, we we came in and played for your staff. Um, and did interviews well. Some places they just have an interview. Um, so I think, I, I don't know if I'd say there's anything different to change. I mean, I, I really enjoy um, doing the playing for the staff thing. I think that's really fun. So I mean, if, if you know, you bring an artist in and they get to play for people and they get to do that, it's, it, and then of course feedback. I mean, we always want to hear feedback from you guys. So um, anything like that or any opportunity to show your craft and show your artistry is definitely something that we love to do. So I mean, um, as I said, my visit with JR was great. We got to play for the staff, we got to play for you guys, and, and you gave us feedback. So um, I think any opportunity to play is definitely important. Marley, talk about the uh, the process of picking the music for an album. Because oh, you get fun. zillions and zillions of songs. Some you write, some you yeah. just get. Yeah, um, you know... I love that process because it's it's fun to like, you know, I mean, especially in Nashville, you get, if you're looking for music for a record, you know, my manager and I were, were going to, to publishing companies and, and kind of basically putting the word out there that I was looking for music. So it was definitely, with this project especially, um, I used a lot of outside songs from other writers and it was fun to kind of, you get the CDs or you get the, the MP3 sent to you and you listen to them and I think the main thing I was listening for was is it something that I want to say, is it something that's important to me and, and most importantly is it something that is going to touch my fans and touch the people who are listening to the music so um, you know obviously groove is important, there's all these things that, that you take into mind you know does the tempo good, is it, you know, do you think radio will like it but um, I think it's definitely important that, that fans are going to like it and, and that I'm going to love singing it because if it's something that does do well, I'm going to have to sing it for the rest of my life. So, um, you know, you don't want to sing a song that you hate. you got to be careful not know who let the dogs out. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I could break into that at any moment. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Marley, I'll just follow up on that because I think it's interesting uh, when you are listening to different songs uh, by lots of, of different people who are trying to get you to record their mm -hmm. song. Do you hear, is there a song you hear and you go, you know, I, I almost want to do it just like it was done or is there, or do you hear a song and you go, you know, if this only had this or yeah. if I could do this with it, how, how does that happen? You know, that, that's a cool question. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, you always, you want to make it your own. So if it's something from an outside writer, you want to kind of bring it into yourself and make it stylistically yours and make it um, feel like a Marley Scott song. And um, definitely, I mean, there's been some songs that I've been pitched that, yeah, we've changed around a lot. I mean, I've got a, a song on my, my new record coming out. It's called Planet of Your Own. And, and the demo is, you know, night and day from what we did on the record. So it's definitely um, a cool time. I mean, I love that part. I love it when I write a song and then all I have is a guitar vocal and all of a sudden it's turned into something with this band. So to do it with other writers as well, with other tracks that you've, you've found from outside writers is definitely a, a cool thing. Is there a song you've passed on that, oh, that became number, you know, gee, I had the opportunity to <laughs> record Amazed and passed on it or something like that? You know, I um, I haven't had any songs that have been pitched that I've um, that have been singles so far, but yeah, I, there's been a few songs that um, that definitely I've discovered have gotten onto other records and, and things like that, um, and I've gone, hey, I almost cut that, or or found out that I wanted to cut something and then and then couldn't because it was uh, it was ended up being cut by somebody else. So that happens. I mean, you know, these songs are, are definitely going around town, and, and people are listening to them. They're a great song. You want to jump on it. You know, I mean, we've we've had a couple songs pitched to me that as soon as we heard them, we were just like, okay, we need that like that day because someone else tomorrow could could take it from us. You know. <laughs> just wondering, Marley, uh, what feedback have you gotten from? Um, Beautiful, maybe in terms of age groups, because the video certainly speaks mm -hmm. to everything from five years old yeah. to eighty-five. Well, I think you know a lot of parents have found that it touches them, especially after they've seen the video. Um, most people that I, I've talked to that are um, have had children or have children, and um, they always say to me, you know, I watched that scene at the end of the video, and if, if you guys aren't familiar with the video, it's um, there's a scene at the end. There's um, a, a little boy, and he's he's 
there's an old man, and the little boy comes over to the old man because the old man's mourning his, his wife. And the little boy gives him his rock, his favorite rock. And it's just a very touching moment. It makes the, the old man obviously feel very, very special and very loved. And, and definitely, I think people with, with kids or any, if you're close with your family, I think you're going to relate to the song. But one of the things we loved about the song was that it was relatable to most age levels and most, most, most any age. Yeah. And it's one of those videos that it's it's a twist. You don't expect mm -hmm. it, uh, yeah. Because it, it starts off with a little Until boy. Until now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, Until did, now. Oh, sorry, I should have offered a spoiler there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I ruined anybody. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, so we're going to record the liners once everybody's done, and then we'll post the liners along with the interviews up. So Marley, thanks a lot. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, thanks, Marley. Marley. Good job, everybody.